Oh
be offended, don't sing it. But I think that he would want you guys to hear it. So uh, we can lift up him and rejoice with everybody. Amen.
get everything out of your mind about anything except Jesus. Please stop and think about Jesus Christ. My aunt, thank God for all of you that were praying. She lived 12 hours. After she was taken off the ventilator, she had been on it for three weeks. Oh, wow. And you can only stay on it so long that they had to make a decision to take the vent out and she would have to breathe on her own. Well, praise God, I was there with her Friday and she wanted strawberry ice cream. Oh, she said, if I get this thing off, I said, Annie and Jean, if you get this thing off, we will go get you a gallon of strawberry ice cream. She got to have her strawberry ice cream. She got the vent off and she got to have that before God called her home. And then, praise God, she got to bring in every one of the grandchildren and the children. And got to talk to them, each one as an individual, in that 12-hour period that God gave her before he tucked her home at her last breath. Grandchildren got to talk to grandma. Kids got to talk to mom. And they had that time. They took the vent off at 2 p.m. on Friday and at 2 a.m. Saturday morning. She went to be home with Jesus Christ. But through the prayers, no doubt, God gave her a little bit more time to be closer to her family and her family closer to her. And they'll never forget to get to talk one more time to mom and grandma. Amen. Jesus was walking, headed to Calvary to the cross. Many people don't understand, you know, they think a, a Good Friday and Easter is just another day off of work, getting a day off, paid day off work. But I'm going to tell you what it's all about. At 9 a.m., Jesus, and I'm not going to get on that right now, but I'm going to tell you, at 9 a.m., Jesus was hanging on a cross. The one that he was carrying, hanging on the cross of Calvary. And at 3 p.m., he gave up the ghost that day. <coughs> but what I want you to understand is we do communion today. Jesus Christ, what we take today, the bread represents the body of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The cup represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Someone says you get really, you really get excited. Well, I'll tell you what, when someone does what Jesus did for all of us, we should get excited. Amen. Amen. We should praise our Lord. Amen. There is a time, there's a place, there's a place for men. I laugh, you know, people today. I come here, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. My mind is trying to see one more soul to get to Jesus Christ. My mind is keeping the Christians that are already saved, encouraged to keep them going. But as Jesus started taking that walk to Calvary, he had to be sure his disciples, Jesus, I can't help but think about a Savior. And Jesus was headed to Calvary. St. John, the first verse is on the screen. St. John, chapter 14. And we're not going to be able to dig through it all today. But Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, Now, fellas, I'm going to die. You know that. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to go to a cross. And you guys, you 12 that I have chosen, and there's one that's going to betray me for 30 pieces of silver named Judas. He didn't name right at that point. He did a little bit later. But what I'm trying to say is God was trying to let his disciples know that it was going to be okay. That no matter what happened to them, that they were going to be taken care of. And sitting there with you today. When that time comes, Jesus has promised you and I that he's going to 
take care of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus tells his disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. In the world we're living in today, how many of our hearts are troubled? How many things are going on that you've never seen, but they're going on now? How many of you get excited for Christ and you, you don't begin to get more excited than ever? Amen. I get a kick out of folks today. You know, you go to a ball game and you praise Jesus. I just, you know, praise that team. You know what? I, I get excited too, and I ain't going to deny it. Amen. But there's another thing I get more excited about, and that's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the Savior that died for us. We walked 33 years upon this earth. He didn't have to do that. But most of all, he went to Calvary for you and for me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So one day, Brother Darrell, when my number would be called like my Aunt Emma Jean's at 2 a.m. on a Saturday night, she went on. She took her last breath, her last heartbeat. There will come a day when this preacher's number will come up. Amen. And no matter who prays, no matter what anyone does, no matter what the doctors do, I'm going home. Amen. Because God has got my mansion ready Amen. over on the other side. <laughs> Let not your hearts be troubled, disciples, and to all this church. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I saw Brother Charlie last week and gave him a card and man he just he looked he, he was so excited. Amen. He was in that bed, you know, and he ain't saying a whole lot right now, but every once in a while we talked and, but I'm gonna tell you, that man has preached for years and years to the elders in nursing homes. Amen. <laughs> and that man has tried his very best. And I'm going to tell you now, whenever something happens to that man, I know where he's going. Amen. He's going home. Amen. 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 In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for all of you. Someone asked me, Pastor, do you really believe that? you have got to believe I believe it. It's in the Word of God. There ain't no ifs, buts about it. We are Christians. We're saved. We're born again. Don't let your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. <clears throat> I go to prepare a place for Kathy Blue, for Donnie Akers, for Larry Weiser, for Jocelyn Akers. For crystal acres, go all the way down through here. All of you, there will come a time when your mansion has been prepared and your number is come up and God said, your work on earth is finished. Come home. He was telling his disciples, sons, you're going to go through a lot. There was only one disciple that was not martyred, one apostle that was not martyred. And his name was John the Revelator, but he was out in the Isle of Patmos for years and years by himself, exiled. The rest was either the, cut off their necks, crucified upside down, you name it, speared. Every one of them stoned. Every one of them men suffered a tragedy, tragic life. But they stood on the Word of God. And if I go in to prepare a place for you, I don't know, but we should be shouting a little bit. We should be thankful a little bit. We should have a smile on our face. I prepare a place. I will come again. I'm so happy why you today to see Tina. I go 
prepare a place for you, I will come again. Amen. It's getting closer. And the sad thing is, I got some folks that just keeps going further out. It used to be they'd come Sunday night, Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they wouldn't miss. Now I can barely get him in on Sunday morning. I call him, I go, call. I've got people that I've called 22 times. Text. No text back. Because they know what I want. I went knocking on the doors. Still, no response. Now I'm going to tell you now. You don't think the old devil ain't working hard? He is working his very best to try to stop people from serving God. And I'm determined that I've got enough of that hillbilly blood and with the Holy Ghost over that hillbilly blood to get a hold of them. Amen? Amen. I got a guy telling me I got two times and nobody is, nobody wants to. I don't go back. I said, well, I'm not like that. I will go until the Lord tells me not to. And he never told me not to Amen. yet. <laughs> I will come again and receive you unto myself, and where I am, there you may be also. Out of the room, as Jesus died a cruel death. He was beaten. He was cannonized. He was beaten. He was spit on. He was laughed at. He was mocked. They pulled his beard out. They put a crown of thorns on him. They hung him on a cross. The blood was coming down. They Buried him in the sun on the cross, and Mary, his mother, was right here. And that blood started going down, and there was his mama at the foot of the cross of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And I want you all to know that that's why your preacher gets excited, that's why your preacher loves to preach. It's because I have one that loved me so much that he died for all of us. Amen. Nancy, he died for you. Wally, he died for you. Brother Darrell, he died for you. Beverly, he died for you. And man, oh man, oh man, I'm telling you, Rodney, he died for all of us. George Ann, he died for you. Brother Don, he died. Sarah Flo, he died for you. And then I could go all the way down. Oh my. Don, Vicky, yes. Grandma Helen, Kathy. I want you to know that there is a promise that's been given to us as Christians. And yes, we are going to face the persecution. <clears throat> what did Jesus face? What did Jesus go through? Right now, we've got many Christians right now today, today over in the Middle East, that will die for their belief in Jesus Christ. In Africa, there are many that are dying for Jesus Christ. Russia, China, you name it. And we have a free country. Amen. And we're bound to keep it free. We're going to keep it that way. Amen. We're going to hold on to Jesus Christ. There's going to be some, the devil's going to try his best. Boy, I really got concerned about 170 lifeway stores closing in America. But I got news for you. God will bring it. He'll get that word to us. We may have to go on online. We may have to go to somebody and get us online. But we will get that material. And God will find a way for us to get the material so we can get closer to Him. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and whether I go, you know, and the way, you know. Next verse, praise God. Thomas says unto the Lord, We know not where thou knowest, and how can we know the way? Jesus says this, and he's encouraging the disciples. Now, if you know Jesus, I want you to remember this. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh to me but the Father. 
If you had known me, you should have known my father also. How many of you, how many of you really seriously, you praise Jesus at home? Amen. How many of you get excited at home? How many of you jump up at home? How many of you can have tears rolling at home? How many of you are sincere about your salvation? I tell people all the time, but I got saved. You didn't see me down to another place where I shouldn't be. You saw me in God's house serving Jesus Christ because he was my Savior. Amen. Wow. Amen. There's a change in our lives. There's a love in our lives. Man, I love everybody. I talk to everybody. She says, oh, Lord, he talks to everybody. <laughs> I went, where was I the other day? Way out somewhere. They said, well, we know you. <laughs> I forget. Sherry said, Sherry goes, anywhere we go, you know something. <laughs> said, well, you know what? You're doing something right. Amen. It makes Amen. you feel good. Amen. Yeah. I believe pastors have to keep themselves straight and they have to stay in the word. They've got to stand strong. They've got to be there for their congregation. They've got to hold on to Jesus Christ. We need help every day, don't we? Amen. We need strength every day, don't we? Amen. We need the promises that Jesus is. Those of you that are living in heaven, lady, call on me and I will give you rest for your soul. How many times have I said, Jesus, I'm weary. But he says, faint not. Right. Hold on. I have all for you. I went to that cross on the road to Calvary. I kept going. I kept my face kept going. I, I, in about two weeks, I'm going to have footprints going up this aisle. Wow. And I'm going to have some footprints made. It goes right to this cross. And this is the road to Calvary. This is <laughs> that last week on that Sunday, Easter. I'd like to get a little box to say, put around this cross with footprints leading to the cross. <coughs> he saw your faces. He saw you. He kept encouraging his disciples. He kept saying, you're going to go through a rough time. People aren't going to like you. They're going to persecute you for believing on me. They're going to hurt you. Sometimes, you know, some, sometimes your own family can hurt you more than anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. If you stand on the word of God, someone says, I don't believe in that junk. You ever heard anybody tell you that? Yeah. I don't believe. Let me tell you something. When you see a miracle of God and we've seen him, we know there's a God. Yeah. Amen. We know there's a God. They were persecuted. They were beaten. They were jailed. Apostle Paul was in jail almost all of his life. But he kept writing the word from the jails, the prisons. And one time about midnight, old Paul and Silas is in a prison. And I can just hear him now. They said, man, them guys are in prison. And listen to him now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that
How many of you can sit at home and talk to him? I do it. I go down the drive, the highway, all the time on hospitals and things. I'm singing away. I, man, I can't get that daggone station up there on the west of Wall, up at north of Wall, though. But I got 104.9, the river. And I listen to that river, and I'm singing along. I, I'm learning some of them songs, and man, I get kind of excited. Amen. And I know that people are looking over there at me like, what in the world is that guy doing over there? He's having a time of his life. Amen. I think about a little boy one day that he was out and he was flying a kite and the wind was great and it took his kite right up and he couldn't see the kite. It went above the clouds. An older gentleman come by and says, well, what are you doing, young man? The young boy says, well, I'm flying a kite. The older gentleman says, well, I don't see no kite up there. How do you know? He says, every once in a while I feel a tug. I feel a tug on the line. Every once in a while when you don't know if Jesus is there, don't you get a tug on your heart? Amen. Don't you get a tug and a help that you know that Jesus is with you? Amen. You know that He's watching over you. You know that He cares about you. And I say, get excited, church. we got a Savior that loves you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This is it. We're going to get to communion. Leave us now not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak of you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. <coughs> leave with me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. On the road to Calvary, Jesus was trying to keep his disciples encouraged. He was trying to keep them going. When he hung on the cross, and they said he was gone. They took him down. And Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus came and got his body. Jesus had nowhere to go. But these fellows, these rich guys, Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus came and found a tomb to lay Jesus' body in. Now I want to tell you, Jesus didn't care about material things. He knew what was waiting up there. I can kind of see it. I got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Amen. Jesus didn't care. Sometimes he'd just have a little bit of change. Just enough. Sometimes if he couldn't find some flowers or something to eat, some kind of berries, whatever he could find. He'd stop by in a little place and get it. He had nowhere to lay his head. He had no home. But he kept going and he tried to win. One more soul. He went with the drunkards. He went with the poor. He went with people who said, you shouldn't talk to him. Jesus went in there and talked to them all. He, talk, he would talk to the drug addict. He would talk to those that had been married five times and living with a man. He says, go and sin no more. <clears throat> See, Jesus loves us. And when you're so low and you're so down and you don't know how you're going to keep going, I want you to remember the one that his body looked like hamburgers when he got done and the blood shed on the cross. And all the wounds you got. I want to ask you. I want to have a motor call real quick. So I'll stand to go for we have communion. I want to ask you. Do you realize that as we take this communion today, the crown like what this bread represents, his body, as you take of that little wafer, and as you take of that little cup of juice, that bread juice represents that blood that Jesus.
Jesus gave for us. So our sins can be covered by his blood. And now he has a promise. He says, I, you believe on me. You've asked forgiveness. I've got a place for you that I'm building. And it's going to be waiting on you when I call your number. And you're going to spend eternity with me. I'm asking you. It's your choice. Just walk out of your seat. 